Okay, so here we are, and I'm going to walk you guys through um, your instructions for what you're going to do with this slideshow. Now, there are some questions that are embedded that I'm going to ask you to answer, and for that, you are going to need to have your own blank sheet of paper. Please go ahead and label it JFK's Rise to the Presidency. Rise to the presidency. Pause this video if you need to at any time, by the way, if you have to get materials or whatever. Um, we are going to label this number three. So please go ahead and pause this video right now and go ahead and grab a sheet of paper and label it according to this slide and then also number three because it's the third thing going into our second reading portfolio. Okay, now that you're back, um, something else that you are going to need I don't know if I have a copy of it here or not. I don't think I do. You guys also need to have your timeline sheet out that I gave you last week. I gave it to you on Thursday, I believe. So please go ahead and grab that out if you would. No, I don't have it, but you guys do. If you need a copy of this, you can always uh, ask and get one out of the basket that's over on the far side of the whiteboard. All right, so please grab that. Another thing that you will need is, of course, something to write with, and then you will need your headphones because you will be watching this video, and then you will also be watching a couple of videos that I've embedded into the slideshow once you take off on your own. But I'm just going to get you set up to go. All righty. Oh, and your Killing Kennedy book, too. Be a good idea to have this around. Okay, so sheet of paper, labeled and ready to go, timeline, headphones, Killing Kennedy book, and then we're good. All right, so pause this video if you need to. All righty. So the first thing is I wanted to give you guys a few tips for reading. Um, I'm not going to go through this slide very much, but one thing that I do want to impress upon you is that the more things that you wonder about what you're reading, the more it's going to stick. And so asking questions as you read is always a great idea, okay? And, of course, we know that we're reading a biography and that there are some opinions that are coming up inside this biography, so always be on the lookout for that, fact versus opinion. Okay, so on your sheet of paper, the first thing that you are going to do is on the first side of it, I'm going to have you write down a couple of questions. So your first question that I would like you to write down is actually not related to this slide at all. So question one is... How did you do on the quiz? Now, this is not to answer just yet. You'll take a couple of minutes in some time, okay? So how did you do on the quiz? What worked? Question mark. What do you need to do for next time? Now, if you got a 12 out of 12 on the quiz, you're going to say, I don't need to do anything, Ms. Shapiro. I'm doing just fine. And I'm going to say, great, good job. Um, but if you got a score that is not so great or maybe that you're not really happy with, that means that you probably need to change your methods. All right? Got to be reading the book. These quizzes are going to be in every single section. It's important that you're reading. All right. So your second question, so leave some space on your paper. Question number two that you're going to write down is what was the legend so what was the legend of Camelot okay and you can see Camelot is right there on your screen okay and actually you're going to click on this link to then find out about Camelot it's gonna take you to this okay and you can read through here and get an idea about Camelot and what it was and that kind of stuff okay so I'm gonna ask you to go ahead and get down a general synopsis of what was the legend of Camelot. Just a few sentences, okay? Um, next up, I'm going to have you watch this little video here, okay? So, again, leave some space in between, right? And question three is I would like to know, based on what you read and then based on this little video, number three is how does the Kennedy presidency compare to Camelot. 
Okay, so see, I left some space in between. So I will come back and answer that after I have watched that little video and I've read the little synopsis. Question four, again, leave some space. Pause as needed if you need to get these questions down. Um, question four is what does the last part of the song mean? Okay, so what does the last part of the song mean? So yeah, you gotta listen to it, and it's great. I loved this musical as a kid. I used to watch it all the time. In fact, I have the entire thing memorized, but I'm not gonna sing it for you. Um, and so, the last question that I'm going to ask you, okay, well, it's not about Camelot. Great. Okay, now here's another thing, though, that actually, wait, we are going to have a question five on this. Um, I would like you guys to read this epilogue, at least just skim it. You can click on it, and it's going to open up into um, a link, see, go to time or at least um, it was from Time Magazine. And so you guys can kind of read through here. And um, this was an interview that Jackie Kennedy gave, I think it was like a week after the president had been shot. And so um, she wanted him to be remembered. She did not want him to go away, just another forgotten president, whatever. She wanted him to be remembered in a great way. And so here she is trying to reinforce the idea of Camelot, among other things. So your fifth question, so number five, I'm writing it down, okay? So I'm writing epilogue. What did Jackie want people to remember about her husband? Okay? So I've still got a little bit of room here down at the bottom. And, of course, you're going to come back and you're going to do this later on your own when you explore. Now, the next thing that I'm going to have you guys do is, if you can, please, take your paper, got your questions all lined up for you, flip it over, and then go ahead and fold it. Yes, origami time. Okay, go ahead and fold it into fourths. All right, voila, lovely. Open it back up. We have four essential questions, and oh, how handy. Look, we have four different little boxes for you. Please write down each of these essential questions in a box. So essential question number one, I've got who was JFK? Please go ahead and pause the video, get the rest of the question down, okay? Now, what you guys are going to do with each one of these essential questions is when you're on your own and you're exploring, I'm going to ask you to go through and look at the linked in things. Some of the pictures have links, these pictures are not linked, but then here's a poll that I would like you guys to look at. And I want you to factor in some of this information into your answer, okay? Um, the next one, essential question number two, going in this second box, please go ahead and pause the video, take a moment to write that down. Was there a conspiracy to kill JFK? Was there a conspiracy? Okay, so what you're going to notice here are you've got three things. Um, one, I'm going to ask you to watch this video, so you'll click on this. It is going to take you out to the Smithsonian Magazine website. It's a really interesting little video that I think is only two and a half minutes long, and it talks about 50 different bits of information or different ideas that are tied to various conspiracy theories. It's really intriguing, so I suggest you watch that. In fact, you have to. Um, and then... There's this little video from Bill O'Reilly himself. He says, no, there was one shooter. His name was um, Lee Harvey Oswald, and that's it. So I want you to watch this, though. And I think you only have to watch the first three minutes to get his take on why he thinks there was no conspiracy. But you can watch the full five minutes if you really want to. And then there's this Gallup poll as well, what most Americans believe. Now, this is really intriguing. So this is LinkedIn as well for you guys to explore. Again, make sure you are factoring in bits of information from each of these sources as you are answering the question. And of course, these are your initial answers. These are assumptions and inferences that you're making based on the quarter of the book that you've read so far and based on these little bits of info that I'm giving you. Essential question three, please go ahead, write this down. Take a moment. Go ahead and pause the video, write down this question. It's about Cold War policies. 
good or not so good, right? And then this is supposed to say essential question number four. Oh, my bad. That's awful. Okay. Essential question number four, what strides were made on civil rights? So we had essential question number three here, essential question number four, okay? Now what I've got linked in for you here is a link to the Civil Rights Digital Library, which is pretty cool. Um, you're going to go ahead and you're going to explore this thing. Let's see if my computer explodes while I was trying to open something else. Great, it didn't. Okay, so these are different events that you guys could take a look at. What I will ask you to do is maybe to focus on... Where is it? Oh, take a look at the Freedom Rides. Okay, please go ahead and click on that and take a little look and see what it has to say. And then just click on a couple of other things that interest you out of these um, different events. This is another one that's mentioned in the book is the Birmingham bombing. And then of course, woo, the March on Washington. Okay, that's a huge one too. So you could take a look at those different events. All right, and you can tie that back into your answer perhaps. And then finally, ooh, the timeline. Okay, so if you have your timeline paper, what you're gonna do is just have it handy. You've got these different events that I've got here for you. Um, because it's over a fairly large span of time, 1917, I would just put that over to the side on its own. Okay, that's when he's born, great. Um, but then 1940 to 1961, those are the date ranges that you're gonna need. So if we need to have about 20 years and you've got about, I don't know, 12 different points or something like that, what are you going to need to do? I don't know. Okay, so 20 years, 12 points. Oh, goodness, it doesn't match up very nicely, does it? Oh, well. Anyway, um, I guess you could try to do maybe three years. Maybe put um, one point every three years or something like that. So you could start off with 1940 and then 1943 and so on. 1946, yeah, I think that'll work. 1949 and then keep going. So if every triangle on your timeline is three years, you can do it that way and that should work out. All right. Now you have all these things here that you should write down on your paper, but also you have access to the speaker notes. Okay, and the speaker notes is um, what sometimes I choose to highlight. These are different bits of information that I've pulled from different places that I just want to remind myself of to say to you guys. Please take a read through here and jot down some additional bits of information that you think you need. Now, you may not write down every single thing. That's okay, but you'll come back and you'll do this on your own in just a moment. Okay, so just be aware. Now, next up, what we read about in section one. Okay, major topics. So here are the major topics that you guys are going to be, uh, or that you already have read, um, I hope. So we had PT-109. We had the Bay of Pigs in Cuba, which was a botched mission. And then we have Jackie's tour of the White House, which she calls the People's House, right? And then your focus was, why does O'Reilly start this way? Aha, I knew it. So on your piece of paper, I knew there was one more question left. Number six, down here at the bottom, leave a couple of lines, okay, so you got some space, write down this question, why did O'Reilly start this way? What does he seem to think about JFK based on the way he depicts or describes him, okay? So now, based on what you know, answer the question, okay? And that's also why I asked you to have your book handy. Please pull one line from the book, from what you read, that helps you with your thought process on how to answer this question, okay? All right, and then what to look for in section two. If you have your bookmark handy inside your book, or if you're able to write in your book, either way, um, please go ahead and write this down. So you could write this at the top of chapter five if you wish, but this is your focus for this section, okay? Are JFK's domestic and international policies effective? Consider his Cold War policies, plus how civil rights, fighting for equal rights for African Americans, are handled. What do you notice? So that's your focus as you're reading, is JFK's policies, both internationally, um, with Khrushchev, and with, um, yeah, it's not over with Castro. That's going to be interesting. Okay, and then... Um, of course, also domestically, different things that JFK